Today's video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. It's already effortless to get beautiful looking shots with cinematic mode, but that does not mean there's nothing we can do to make it look its absolute best. So here are 8 pro tips for making the most out of your iPhone 13's cinematic mode. In cinematic mode, touching the screen no longer has an effect over exposure. You can't tap on something, then drag the little slider to darken or brighten the image, which was something you could do in standard video mode. Fortunately, that does not mean you have zero control over exposure in cinematic mode. Simply swipe towards the top of your phone to reveal the hidden exposure compensation setting, and now you can brighten or darken the overall image in cinematic mode. When shooting with big cinema cameras, we would often do something called stopping a lens down. By reducing the size of the lens's aperture, it reduces the amount of background blur. On the iPhone, you can do the same in cinematic mode by tapping on that F icon. This technique comes in handy when the computational video is struggling with some particularly tricky subjects, things like glass or visually dense detail like leaves. Now, stopping down would make any rough edges less noticeable, but one huge advantage the iPhone has over the cinema cameras is you can decide to stop down after you have shot your footage. Number three is a very simple tip, but very often overlooked, and that is simply finding a good soundtrack to supplement your visuals. Now, the name of it is cinematic mode, so imagine watching a movie with its music turned off. Now, I'll admit that I myself am sometimes lazy to find music as well, especially if it's just for a short clip. But when I do pick myself up and do it, it truly does elevate what I've shot. If you're wondering where I get my music from, it's from our sponsors today over at Epidemic Sound. They have been my primary source of music, and that includes content not sponsored by them as well. Now, I like their service because they've got original, professionally produced music and over 35,000 tracks of them. It also comes with a sound effects library. That one's got over 90,000 effects. Epidemic also owns 100% of all their music, so there is not a chance your videos would ever run into any copyright issues for using their music. If you're creating content for your personal channels, then the personal plan is perfect for that. It covers use for most social media platforms, which means you can use the tracks on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, and also podcasts. You're absolutely allowed to monetize your content containing Epidemic's music, and my personal favorite feature on Epidemic Sound is how you get the option to download a track in their broken down stems, meaning on top of the full mix, you have individual access to the instruments, drums, bass, and melody. All that allows you to really tailor a track to your content. You can try it for yourself by signing up for a free one month trial using the link below. And the neat thing about this trial is any videos you use during the free trial will remain safe and protected even if you decide to cancel after your free month is over. So go ahead and claim your free month of music. Now here's a very important tip for after you've shot your cinematic mode footage. If you ever airdrop that clip to another Apple device, make sure you first press options at the top of the share menu, then turn all photos data on. You'll have to repeat this every time you start a new transfer because these settings will default back to off. This is important for preserving metadata so that the receiving device can still edit the settings exclusive to cinematic mode. Things like adjusting the amount of background blur and the ability to refocus on a different subject. Now, if, say, the clip was transferred without all photos data turned on, then a rendered version of the clip gets sent over and you lose the ability to tweak its parameters. And number five, did you know that you can edit cinematic mode footage in Final Cut Pro? I mean, of course you can, it's a video editing software, but I'm saying you can change the amount of blur, refocus the footage, level of edit. Now, this functionality is only available if you are running Final Cut Pro on macOS Monterey, but if you've got that, then you'll be able Able to see your clip settings for cinematic mode right in the inspector panel. Again, if you transfer those files to your Mac using AirDrop, you will need to make sure that all photos data was turned on. 
you'll find that each cinematic mode clip gets transferred over as a folder, and there are a number of files inside. The correct one to import into FCP is the MOV file that does not have an E in the file name. Alternatively, you could also make the transfer over a cabled connection using image capture. Now, although one of the key advantages of cinematic mode is being able to change your focus in post, this next tip is going to be a little bit contradictory, because I'm about to advise you to try your best to get as much right in camera as possible at the time of shooting. This is because on top of the simulated bokeh applied by cinematic mode, the lenses in your iPhone are also physically shifting focus onto the tracked subject. And unlike the simulated bokeh, that's not something we can freely adjust in post. Here's an example. In cinematic mode, you rack focus from your subject to the background. You then edit that video in post and cancel that focus rack so that the focus stays on the subject. But because the lens had a physical shift in focus as well, our subject would appear soft. Now this is an extreme example to accentuate the problem. If the subject was further away, then this would have practically been a non-issue. The softening might not even be visible, but for the ultimate best looking results, try to get as much right as possible while filming. Tip number seven is to simply plan ahead, specifically regarding frame rates. So far, cinematic mode records only in 30 frames per second. Now, if you're shooting and posting single clips only, like Instagram stories, then there is absolutely nothing to worry about. But if you're planning to use a few cinematic mode clips in a project that's, say, 24 frames per second, remember to slow the clips down to 80% speed for the case of 24 FPS so that they play back nicely without skipping over any of the recorded frames. Alternatively, you could just make sure that everything else is shot in 30 FPS as well, so you won't have to worry about mixing frame rates. And now the final tip is, again, a simple one. Enable Dolby Vision HDR in the camera settings even if you have no intentions of delivering in HDR. One of the super cool things about cinematic mode is you have the option to capture it in Dolby Vision HDR just like you could with conventional video mode. The reason you want to shoot in HDR even if you don't need it is because on the iPhone, HDR videos get recorded in 10-bit as opposed to only 8-bit if you had that HDR switch turned off. It's actually a huge jump in quality. 10-bit video records four times more brightness information per channel compared to 8-bit, and that's going to help you maintain image quality when you make adjustments to the image in post. HDR video on the iPhone is also recorded in something called HLG, which is fully backwards compatible with non-HDR playback environments. So whether you plan to deliver in HDR or not, it wouldn't hurt to shoot in HDR anyway. And that's eight tips down, which has hopefully contributed to your mastery of the technical marvel that is cinematic mode on the iPhone 13s. Check back for more videos just like this, and I'll be seeing you in one of my other videos.